We are strong. No one can tell us. I discovered my love for music. Probably, well, I mean, I, I can't remember not having a love for music. Actually, when I was uh, very, very young, I have I have very young parents. So my mum was nineteen and my dad was twenty one when they had me. Um, so they were still in the music buying part of their life. You know, I think when you're in your teenage years and your twenties, you buy music and you're very much aware of you know trends and bands and stuff so i was brought up in the i was born in 1979 so through the 80s i was an 80s child i was my dad had a big uh, uh 45s they were vinyls but they were singles so they were small records and they used to have one song on each side and my dad had like 30 of them and when i was about four or five, I remember that I used to put them on the record player and I used to listen to them on the headphones. And I learned uh, about bands that were much older than me, you know, and uh, like the Drifters and the Beatles, David Bowie, the Rolling Stones, uh, Scylla Black, Petula Clark, you know, music that was way before my generation, but I loved it. And I think that was the music that probably was the first music I remember. And ever since then, I've been singing those songs, and and so and I've I've listened to music and appreciated it. It's been a massive part of my life ever since. I always was an entertainer. I'm a performer. Ever since I was a young child, I loved to sing in front of people. I like to recite poetry. I like to uh, reenact comedy sketches from the television. Um, I am an entertainer. I've always been an entertainer. And I guess, you know, entertainment comes in many forms and singing is a is a form of entertainment. And acting is also a form of entertainment. Um, you're telling a story, you're trying to relay your emotion into somebody who's listening or watching. And um, so they're both very satisfying for me to do. I'm just very lucky that I'm able to do both and enjoy doing both those things and um, get to do them on such a wonderful level where I can, you know, uh, record an album and, and get it released in, uh, around the world and also get to have movies that are, you know, released. And the only reason I'm here in Germany today is because you guys really know me from my movies, not because of my singing. And now I'm here because of my album. So it's a wonderful thing. My education in, in singing were started when I was 16. I left home when I was 16 and I got a job and I used to take 15 pounds out of my wage. I didn't get paid very much, so there was quite a lot of money for me to do that, but I always wanted to learn to sing properly. I always sang, but I never really uh, understood the craft of singing and what it, there's a lot to singing, you know. There's a lot of breathing techniques. There's a lot of, you know, you can learn classical, Italian aria, you can learn German leader music, which I did. Du bist, du bist die Ruhe, I think I know, that's yes, yeah, I, that's a German song I remember learning as a teenager. And my singing teacher taught me how to do um, a technique. <clears throat> and then I auditioned for a scholarship in London when I was 16. And out of the blue, I won it. <laughs> and before I knew it, I was in London uh, on a three-year full-time scholarship in a musical theater college where I learned to dance. I'd never danced in my life. That was the most terrifying experience of my life, I think, learning, having to put tights on and stand with little ballet shoes and learn how to do ballet. But there was a reason why, you know, you go to college to learn these things because it's a discipline and it's a, it's a, it's a physical t discipline to learn how to stand and uh, stage presence and timing and remembering choreography because after I left college I went into musical theatre and that's what you do. So that's sort of my formal training was, um, that was it. Well, I have a lot of inspiration when it comes to music. Um, there are songs that I remember discovering especially there's a track on my album which is called uh, first time ever i saw your face which has been covered many times by very famous people but i discovered it when i was about 12 years old um, on a cd 
by Roberta Flack, who I think is probably the most well-known version of the song. And uh, not only did I love the song itself, it stayed with me ever since, 28 years later, um, but it has, her voice and the way she sang influenced so much of my technique and my ability to emote through music and through lyrics, because uh, if you have a moment, just download the song or just listen to it on Spotify and you'll understand what I mean, because she has this ability to, it feels like it's coming from the depths of her soul when she sings and it's a, it's a magical thing. And that's what I, <clears throat> I was impressed with and inspired by. Other uh, singers I've been impressed and, and inspired by more recently are people like Adele. I am a huge fan of Adele's music. I think also she's an incredible songwriter. She is able, at her very young age, able to relay such deep, uh, heartfelt, guttural emotions that uh, even people three times her age can relate to what she sings about. And, and she writes that music and she sings that music from such a pure, authentic place. I really appreciate everything she does. George Michael is another huge uh, <clears throat> inspiration for me. His music, for me, I went through his whole career, really. You know, I was a child, in some baby in 79, the 80s, the 90s, you know, all his incarnations from leaving Wham to becoming a solo artist to being like this humongous solo artist, an incredible voice, incredibly uh, pure, uh, he has, he's a tenor, he has this beautiful lyrical sound to his voice and his music has been a soundtrack to my life and um, I've, uh, I've really uh, enjoyed watching his music as it's developed. Um, so it's very sad for me that he's not with us anymore, but he has left an incredible legacy of music which we will always cherish and it'll, it'll last for a very long time. It wasn't that I didn't want to rec record an album, it was getting the opportunity to record an album and finding the right moment in my career to do that. As a singer, I can't remember a time in my life where I didn't want to have an album, where I didn't want to be a recording artist. But my career took a different journey and, um, you know, it just didn't happen. And before I knew it, I was making movies at the age of 29 and 11 years later, I'm still doing those things and I'm loving every moment of making movies and um, it's been an extraordinary experience. When I did Beauty and the Beast, I think a huge amount of my fan base, my fans around the world would never have known that I sang. And it was only that film where people was like, oh my God, you actually, you sing, you know, my, well, where did that come from? And then, you know, I did a few more sort of um, things on television where I got to sing live and I sang for the Queen's birthday last year at the Royal Albert Hall with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. It was a magical evening and it slowly, I sort of planted the seed in people's minds, you know, like we'd like to hear him sing more. And then I was approached just under a year ago by um, a record producer who said, you should write an album, you should, you should record an album. I think, I think it's time, you should do it. And I was like, thank God, like, right, finally, after all these years, this is my moment. But it was an organic thing. So there was nothing, it was more that it came to me, not that me, I was looking for it, but I was waiting for it to happen. I wanted it to happen at the right time. And it feels that this is exactly the right time for it to happen. I was asked by the Buckingham Palace to, um, to sing. Yeah, yeah, very, it's quite a nice experience when you have a letter that comes through your door and it's stamped, because you don't get a stamp. If it comes from the palace, there's no stamp. It's just the royal crest. And uh, the address is like, I don't know what it is, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bizarre address. And you know that it's coming from Buckingham Palace. And you open it up and there was, there was invited to, to sing for Her Majesty the Queen for her 92nd birthday. So it's very, it's very special. I'm very honored to be, uh, to be asked. And then, you know, as if that wasn't enough, I then got to sing on stage with 
my my idols. I love these people: Kylie Minogue, Jamie Cullum, Tom Jones, Sting. It was just magical. We all have a soundtrack to our lives, right? So you have moments in your life where you hear a song and you and you you are immediately transported back to the moment you heard that song or when it was in the charts. What were you doing? Who you were dating, where you lived, what job were you doing? You know, what you know, there's many things it reminds you like a muscle memory. And a lot of these songs have those moments for me because I know that there's a lot of covers on the album and uh, there was two reasons for that. One, because I wanted to connect emotionally to these songs and they all mean something to me. And then I wanted to connect to the songs that I love to sing. And all these songs are songs that I've always uh, sung in the shower or sung to my friends or sung on my own or in the car when I'm driving. And then I realized that the songs that we chose, 80% of them were by women. And that actually makes a lot of sense because all the songs I love are sung by women. And probably most of them sung by black women who have these incredible voices. And they're the ones that have inspired me as a singer to learn my craft and hone my ability as a singer to emote and to, to uh, be free and, and, uh, and uh, allow the story to be told through, through music and through, through the lyric. And so these songs, you know, that's where they came from. And then I decided... How do you make these very famous songs uh, different without them sound, without me sounding like I'm copying these songs? So we strip these songs back down to their bare essentials, to the lyrics. We rearrange them. We slowed them down. We, I mean, we turned, if I could turn back time, which is famously sung by Cher, who I love, we took it back to the, the lyrics which, written by Diane Warren, one of the best songwriters that's ever lived. And we turned it into a ballad, into a very melancholy ballad, you know. And you listen, you start hearing the lyrics in a different way. You start going on a different journey when you listen to that song. So that was the challenge. And I think we've accomplished it with a lot of the songs on the album. Well, Steve, um, I'm very lucky that I met Steve around 15 years ago when I did a musical called Rent and he did the orchestration. And so I got to work with him for a month to rehearse the show. And cause he, he reimagined all the music in Rent. It was the same songs, but they sound completely different. The arrangements, the, 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 uh, the backing, the music is all so different. And so he knew me very well 15 years ago and he's watched my career progress. And he was one of the people that were the original instigators in getting me to make an album. So I felt like I was in very safe hands with Steve. Steve also knows my voice. He knows what I know I can do, but he also knows what I know I can't do. And so some of these songs on the album were things that he presented and I was like, mm, I'm not sure. I just really a share track, like seriously. And he's like, trust me, this is going to work. So I waited and then the arrangement came through and I listened to it and I was like, I can do something with it. And he knew I didn't know. And that's the good thing. That's a good producer. You know, that's somebody who understands people's voices and knows their potential, even if they don't know it themselves. So it was a wonderful experience. And it was very sad when I finally recorded the final track on the album because I was like, mm, I've been enjoying this experience so much. So, you know, hopefully the album does well and I get to go into the studio and record another one. The album, great. Recorded it, fantastic. If people buy it and they love it, it's going to be a wonderful experience for me to see that, you know, people are enjoying the music. The best part of that would then to be able to take it on the road and to sing live with a band and to tour it, you know, um, take it around Europe and wherever else, you know, and, and uh, actually do the whole thing live because that's what I love to do is to sing live. It's where my passion lies is with an audience which I can talk to them and relate to them and sing to them. And hopefully they enjoy the experience as much as me.
Well, I was lucky enough to see the Rolling Stones in concert last year, and they were magical. Like you, for, you in, within ten minutes, you forget that they're all in their seventies, and the, Mick Jagger's bouncing around the stage. They are living their lives at the fullest, and they still can take you on this epic journey uh, during their concerts. They sound incredible, you know. These, uh, so that really was a memorable experience. I'm very, very um, grateful I've got to see them live because they're incredible. Um, my first ever concert I ever saw was a, a band called OMD, um, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, which I absolutely still love their music. Um, I think I was 14 when I saw them live in Wales. Um, and uh, I've seen, I've been very, very lucky to see many uh, artists sing ever since. Um, and I'm, yeah, it's, um, it's the best thing, seeing a band live you know, on a stage with, you know, like thousands of people all there for exactly the same person or the same band. It's wonderful. No, I think I definitely have um, a little nerves, without a doubt. Um, but I think that's part of a performer's experience. Is uh, if you have no nerves, then it's just like a day job. You know, you just. I feel like nerves can be a good thing, and I, I definitely get a little nervous, but I'm able to put it in a good place and use that energy and that sort of like tension to uh, I channel it into the performance and. Uh, but no, my dream is to perform. I love to entertain people. So as long as they're going to listen, I'm going to sing. I absolutely would love to sing on screen again. I think it was a wonderful experience playing Gaston and Beauty and the Beast. And we definitely, I am in talks about doing a few things which will combine the music and film and television so we just have to watch this space for now but um it might happen it might happen yeah oh.